What's good, y'all? Once again, as always, want to thank y'all for tuning in to OG Suicide in the Building. Always appreciate it. The support means the world to me. Thank you. And today, I got my young nephew in the building, man, Sean Christopher in the building. What up, dog? Man, what's good with you, man? Hey, man, no much, bro. Just, just grinding, bro. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Another day, another dollar. You feel me? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, Mando. Mando. I mean, that's definitely what it's about, man. Um, you know, for the audience, man, you know, they first time seeing you, learning who you are, man. Tell them who you are and where you from. Okay. I'm a, um, I don't like to really box myself in, but okay. I'm, what, I, I'm an R&B artist, but I would like to say I'm a, I'm a recording artist. Originally from Detroit, Michigan. Um, I currently reside in Atlanta, but yeah, I'm the, um, I come from music royalty, man. My, um, my family had a lot to do with, with my Motown. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell yeah. us about that. All right. So yeah. So my um first and foremost, my uncle Sonny Baker was in a group called the Dynamics. Yeah. Okay. And he just passed away in January. He was one, with one of the my groups. condolences. No, appreciate you. He was one, one of the first groups signed to Atlantic Records, and I got another uncle named uh Roquel, Roquel Payton. He was in he's in the uh, Four Tops, and he oh, took wow. he took his dad's place when he died in like the nineties, late nineties, early two thousands. Uh huh. Yeah. So and I got another aunt. Elaine Watkins Baker, rest her soul too. She was in a group called the Chalfantes with um, wow. Diana Ross. Them classics. Yeah, yeah. Before Diana Ross was with, with yeah. the Supremes. So. Yes. Yeah, I got, I got some blood. I got some royal blood in me. Yeah, bro. them classic yeah. moments right yes, there. Sir. Oh, okay, yes, sir. okay. Um, so you say you you reside in um, Atlanta. When did you? Uh, you said Detroit, right? Uh, yeah, when did yeah. you leave Detroit? How old were you when you left? I left, I left Detroit what 2014. I want to say I was about. 18, 19. Uh, I moved to Atlanta for school. I went to Morehouse College. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I did like two years there and then I dropped out because like I put out this song called Trillouette and it just started doing numbers. Trillouette. Yeah, okay. yeah. I heard a song called Trillouette and I, I, before you know it, I was in class. I just heard the numbers just started going up. Man, I walked out. I walked <laughs> right out that mug, bro. Say, so I'm out of here. Yeah, I'm out of here, bro. And then I got a call from Atlantic, bro. And like labels started hitting me up, bro, and it was just, you know, I'm like, you know what? Why am I in school paying for something I don't really want to do? Yes. You know, becoming in debt. You know what I'm saying? When this is not really what I want to do, so I, I dropped out. You feel me? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Did you end up signing with no, the label? They, so they only offered me a pub deal at the time, and you no, know, a younger version of myself was thinking like, okay, I don't want to write for other people. I want to be the star. Okay. I want to like. You know, I want to write. I want to tell my own story because that's the only reason. Thank you, family. That's the only way that I write. I okay. write what I go through. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. So I wasn't really thinking at the time. I wasn't thinking from like a mature businessman standpoint. Okay. I'm over here thinking like, you know, I want to be the star. So I did. I turned it down. You, you know feel like I mean? you had an ego? Yeah, yeah something yeah, like that. It was something an ego. Like that, you, you feel, feel like, like I ain't doing that. My my record popping right now. Exactly. Well, Y'all got to offer me more exactly. than that. Exactly. Do you regret not taking the pub deal? At this point, yeah, because it's like. I didn't think that me taking that route okay. could have led me to where I wanted to be ultimately. Like, if you look at people like Neo, Kerry Hilson, um, The Dream, a lot of people started off as songwriters. Yes. Lucky Day. A lot of people started off as songwriters and all okay. of them. You feel me? Okay. So I, that wasn't my mindset at the time. My, my mindset was like, okay, I got to take care of my family now. I got people back in, the, in Detroit, you know, starving, struggling. You feel me? So, yes. I was and, just and thinking you stepping about, up. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. What was life like in, in Detroit? In Detroit, my mom did a good job. I was raised in a single mom, single parent household. Mm. She did a good job at like keeping me away from the street shit. You feel me? Okay. Like she she took us out of Detroit public schools and put us in the school in the burbs. So like I knew I knew cats that was out, you know, doing the street thing. My cousins were doing the street thing, but like for me. Like she did a good job at masking that for me, cause like yo, there's she she let me realize that there's a lot more to the street. You know what okay. I'm saying? Like, okay. I can't want more for myself. You feel me? Yes. And like, she was like, I think she was the first person in our in our in our family to graduate or go to college. You feel me? So, oh wow! And she played college basketball too. Is that right? Yes, sir. Oh okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So, That's tight. Yes, sir. That's tight. So how, what about school? You know, out in Detroit, was it? I mean, was it was it grimy? Was it good for you? Or? Uh, like I was in the burbs, so it was. Oh, you? Yes, right. You it said was a, it she was moved a, you. It was a different vibe because I was one of the only black kids in my class, so I had to do with racism and shit like that, you know. Okay. Um, 
But yeah. How like, was that? How was that for you? The racism thing, racism. man. Stress, stress, depression. I feel like I feel like that's part of the reason why I got into music, cause like mm. a lot of the a lot of the shit that I would go through in high school, mm-hmm. it did it did take a toll on my mental. It did. Mm. Um, and I remember my mom got me a recording a recording set. My mom, my mom and my my stepdad got me got me a recording set okay. in middle school. And I started just to play around with it a little bit, and I started taking a liking to it. Okay. But before I started recording, I started I was in the church choir since I was like a jit, like five years old. You That's feel me? That's what's up. So like I always had like a love for singing, and plus you know my uncles and my yeah yeah my auntie, yeah you come from yeah you know what I'm saying. So like I just started putting two and two together, and like before you know it, I would I would find myself you know in my room for like just lock the door locked in my in my room for like hours at a time. You feel me? And I wouldn't come out until I had like at least two, three songs, and it just started from oh, there. Oh wow! Yes, sir. Okay, that was it. That yeah. that so that's that's kind of like. But now, how do you do it? Like when you get in the studio, like what is thing. what is your creativity? So, what, well, you don't lock yourself in the room. I, I you lock yourself no, in the no, studio. No, 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 no. <laughs> so pretty much, like even to this day, I don't. I found it kind of. I find it kind of challenging mm. to write music about something that I'm not going through. I can I can take it there though. But it's like the passion and the love and like the, the detail in the song mm-hmm. is there more when I'm when I'm going through something. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, when something going on I in connect, your life. I connect the music to my heart. Like okay. I paint my emotions on the canvas, which is the beat. You feel me? Yes. Yes, sir. So like, what what's some of the things you be going through? Like relationship Mar- um, situations, mar- marital issues, marital like issues. Oh, so issues. you married? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. How long you been married? Almost two years now. Mm. You know. And you go through, um, you said marital issues. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But you know, it's it's nothing you can't get through without God. You feel me? Mando. That's why we got to make sure we put God first in everything that we do. I I attend a church called Resurrection House for All Nations okay. in Union City, Georgia. Uh, my apostle Anuzo Achika, he's the apostle over there. Okay. He's a very holy man, blessed man. Okay. And I'm just so grateful and honored to be under a man like him because if it wasn't for his like his guidance. Like I would handle a lot of things in my marriage or even in like daily life the wrong way. You feel me? Okay. You gotta make sure you have some spiritual wisdom. It's cool to have street wisdom. Yeah. But like spiritual wisdom. Yes. That's gonna get you further. Yes. God is the is the omnipotent, the almighty. You know what I'm saying? The spiritual wisdom helps you exactly. use your mind. Exactly. Think before you react. Yes, sir. Yeah, because every every action don't need a reaction. Exactly. Definitely. Okay. And I'm not saying I'm perfect. You feel me? I, I'm no one is. You know, I'm still I still battle with flesh and blood every day. You feel okay. me? Okay. But at the at the end of the day, I feel like I've grown a lot in the past two years, and I feel like my marriage has helped me with that too. Like you know, I didn't start really like I grew up in the church, but okay. then when I when I moved away to Atlanta for school, I yes. kind of distanced myself from God. You know what I'm saying? But why 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 is that? Uh, I was heavily influenced in the in the college world, you know what I'm saying? The college mm, that life. lifestyle, that yeah. environment. Exactly. So you could say it took you under. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like my marriage and everything that I was going through spiritual warfare with in my marriage, it made me like want to like step up as a, in a spiritual way. Okay. And like try to you know help, I guess, save my marriage in a way, or like just like anything else that I was dealing with, because I. I can go on and on about all the stuff I'm dealing with right now. Like yeah. I'm going through it right now as we speak. You feel me? Yeah. 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 I can I can go into it if you, if you want me to. It's like we got I mean, problems. what's what's okay? What's some of the um? Okay, you said um, were you married before you went to college? No, 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 no. no. Okay, so you got married after college? Yes, sir. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. and so you feel like the college took you away from, from God, spiritual yeah. from yeah, God? Yeah. And during your marriage, you feel like in order to fix things in your marriage, um, for you and your family to get back closer to God would help your marriage. And is it helping? Yeah, it is. A lot. It's helping a lot. You smiled. What was that about? I feel like <laughs> I feel like when you're in a covenant with God. Yes. When you're in a covenant, like it's like something like marriage. Yes. The devil doesn't like that. Mm-hmm. If you see, if you see America today, mm-hmm. people are taught to like. Get one up on somebody else, like whether it's a relationship, like whether we have women uh, finessing niggas out of money, or 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 men calling women bitches, or thinking it's cool to have multiple women. It's like that's not of God. You feel me? Okay. And I feel like the industry, like I'm gonna be honest, I feel like the industry today is trying to put out a certain message 
okay. to, 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 to break up homes or like to send people into the system. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you don't believe in being a player? I don't believe in that. Okay. I don't. Okay. Maybe when I was younger, yeah, I thought it was cool. <laughs> when you was in college? Ex exactly. <laughs> yeah, and it got me into a lot what of What was some things. of the college life like? What was what was that about? Uh, How was it? I tried to stay away from it as much as I could. Um, my sophomore year, I moved off of campus. I got myself a crib. Uh, but when I was in school, there was a lot of a lot of temptation with women. Okay. Uh, they was everywhere. Huh? Drinking, all that stuff. Yeah, Parties. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Parties, all that, bro. But I was I was pretty much the one to like stay in my dorm room. Like even when I was in my in my, in my dorm room, I had recording equipment, and I used to record in my dorm room. And uh, people that I stayed in the dorm with, mm -hmm. like they used to report me to the RAs in the, in the dorm because like I was blasting my shit. But it was crazy because remember there was a certain time when I had uh, I had brought a couple of Jock Creases people through to my dorm room. Okay. Or whatever to do, like, a, to flick up, like, a photo shoot for the cover art. Okay. And niggas really started to see from that point that, you okay, were serious, I'm huh? on my shit. Yeah, exactly. Like, this ain't no play play. Like, a lot of niggas started to, like, I guess, cling on to me in a way, like, okay, how can this nigga benefit me? You know, because I'm trying to get into something like this. And niggas really started to, like, take me serious to a point where, like, in the AUC, like, Morehouse, Clark, and Spellman, a lot of people started to look at me like, okay, he's doing his thing. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And I feel like I put a lot of people's minds into perspective. Like, okay, it's it's cool to have the college life and all that, but it's time to buckle down and really, I guess, put myself, my future self in a position where I don't really have to like, you know, I don't have to struggle or grind as much mm -hmm. after college. You know okay. what I'm saying? Because I, I ain't going to lie, I still got student loans I got to pay off. I'm paying that shit yeah, a lot of people do. A lot but, of people, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, man. Who, like, who are some people that's in the game that you work with or that you still work with? Okay, so, you know, uh, UTU, uh, OVO, so my homie Roy Woods. Okay. He signed, he signed a Drake. I've been cool with Unlock the Underground, which is like a, I want to say, that's the label that, Roy Woods is signed to under OVO. Mm. So I've been working with a lot of them niggas, a lot of people who was associated with OVO since and I made that connection when I when I was when I was in college. Okay. Like pretty much just like doing networking on, on Instagram and stuff, just reaching out to to smaller people in the camp or middlemen in the camp, yes. you feel me? So ever since like I wanna say 2015, 2014, I've been cool with them niggas ever since. You know? Um I also work with Sada Baby. We got okay. a song right now. Um uh, it's actually gonna be on my album. Okay. It's going crazy right now. And the album's coming out when? Man, to be honest, I don't have a date right now, but I want to put that shit out within the next like three months. Okay. Yes, okay. Sir. That's a good time for You know, I, I had to deal with some uh with some with some bad business recently. I mean, it it, it happens yeah. in this game, you yeah, know, exactly. in, in, in this industry, it it definitely happened, but at the same time, you know, learn from it. Exactly. And and, and kind of do a deeper um research exactly. you know with people you do business with in this right. game man is that we have people in in this world man that wake up every day um with a a, a scam mentality exactly you know that's that's their mind frame you right. know to to look in a scam you know someone which a lot of people don't get man if you put in that same time energy and effort towards doing it the right way Right. You know what I mean? You're going to get better results. Exactly. You know? That, uh, that's real. Okay, saw the baby. Okay, what, what what's that collab about? It's uh The song is called Peace of Mind. It's pretty much like one on a break from a toxic relationship. Mm. That's pretty much what the song is about. Um, okay. I got, a, I got a remix of it on the album, too, that's going on the album with a, a, a group called, a duo called The Moonlight. Okay. And they like they rock with uh, Taylor Gang, Wiz Khalifa. They do a lot okay. of a lot of collaborations. They out of India. They they get millions of views on everything, streams, okay. everything. So, okay. Yeah. What was your verse? What your um yeah your your part of that song? What you know uh, bad relationship? What was your part of that song? What did you pretty much speak on uh, in that song? Um, pretty much like when a you know like women. I don't want to I don't want to blast nobody, but I don't want to. I guess to give out a stereotype, but women, I guess people in general don't like to take accountability for things. So yeah, that's that's like, people in general people, for sure. People okay. in general, but I guess I, I I guess I bottled it. I bottled it in a relationship standpoint. So pretty much, 
Previous women, relationships or your marital? Previous, current, everything. Everything, okay. You know what I'm saying? All so, of the above. Exactly. So pretty much women don't like to take accountability. So it's like, well, in relationship that I was in, the okay. women didn't like to take accountability, so why would I take the blame or the fall for the reason why we're going through issues when we both have a play a part in yes. the negativity? You feel me? Yeah. That's, that's what my verse was talking so about. So it was like... You feel like the relationship was one sided. One sided, exactly. Okay, you you did your part, but when exactly. you look over here, expecting to see the, you got your fifty percent, but when you look over here, you expecting to see your fifty percent, where it's at like twenty something percent. Exactly. Okay. Seven, uh, eighty twenty. You feel me? Okay, eighty twenty deal. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, and that's definitely uh, that's one sided for mm -hmm. sure, for sure. Exactly. That, that's most definitely one sided, man. So. Um, you you still in the studio working or what are you doing? Oh yeah yeah yeah, I'm still in the studio every day. Uh, I record myself. I started. I've been recording myself for about what, like seven years, eight mm -hmm. years now. Cause it's like when I go to the studio, the the engineer they don't they don't know my vision or where I want to take the song. Like he he would put a X amount of reverb on my vocals when I didn't really need that much. So it's like I like to engineer my own shit. I like to record my own stuff, and then I give the the engineer the reference, and they just they, I send my vocals off, and they mix that shit to my liking. You feel okay, me? okay. You so you kind of like you have templates and that you go off exactly. of exactly, and it, it saves time and money because like I'm recording my own shit. You feel me? I'm about to start learning to mix my own stuff for real. Yeah, because it's like you know that's a saying? good idea. Exactly, that's a good idea, and, and charge other niggas too for mixing. Charge other niggas, you know what I'm saying? You produce, you do beats or anything like that? Uh, I've been trying to play around with it for the past couple of years, since COVID, actually. COVID let me expand my mind with the music tip. Uh, I got myself a little MIDI keyboard, so I've been playing around on the, produ on the production tip. Okay, what would you say um, if, if you had your album right here, um, any of your music, yeah. rather old or new, you know, if you had it right here, if we was to push play, what would be the first record you would go to? What's your go-to? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I got a new record that I put out back in July. It's called Had It. Had It. What's yeah. that about? Had uh, It? Yeah, I had it up to here, like, in a relationship. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I put my own all into it, and I feel like you can hear, like, if you go back to my older music. Yes. And this song, I feel like I've matured a lot mm -hmm. um, with, my like, my mindset in songs. And like just my vocals and my writing ability overall, and if you hear my older stuff, I'm more on my like my savage stuff, like okay, you know, heartbroken type stuff. You feel me? Breaking like, hearts, so your heart broken. Breaking hearts. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so now your music is more like your heart being broken. You would say it's more or just so, bad situations. It's more so like bad situations, and I don't really want to like. I don't want to. I don't want to like. I guess put a spotlight on the negative music because I do have positive music too. Okay. I have uplifting music, and in the near future, I plan on doing like crossing over to Christian music also. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like putting both out there because like you, know, I don't want to contradict myself by talking about one thing in my music and then like putting out a Christian album. Like if I'm gonna stay in one thing, I'm, I'm gonna stay in one thing. You feel me? But so when you start doing, let's go to say. When you actually start doing Christian music, then that's kind of be that's gonna be the focus. You're not gonna do oh, no, no. the so other kind of music. Are you gonna, gonna mix Christian it up? Music, but I feel like my my worldly music is gonna be like focused on positive stuff or mm -hmm. like love. Like people still making love songs all the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. I just I just don't put no negative messages behind it. Oh, okay. So a lot of your music, a lot of your music that you make now is pretty much just about relationships. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, what about the uplifting music? What is what what form of uh, music is that? I feel like what's one of the song titles? Reach us. Reach us. I got a song called Reach Us. It's pretty much about like me just me me being on on my grind and like just doing everything on my own and like not listening to haters and stuff. You feel me? Well, why would you listen to a hater? Exactly. I'm just saying, that's but, a question. Hey, some, sometimes you don't know they're a hater at first, you feel me? No, you don't. I mean, well, in these days and times, what I've learned um, over the years, you know, me being an older cat, man, um, sometimes may hate coming jokes. Right. Ooh. You know? Yeah. yeah. Hey, that was a nigga I used to, I was in, a, when I was in Detroit, I was in a group uh -huh. called True Vibe. I was the singer. My partner was the, was the rapper. 
And uh, when I moved down to college, that's when I went solo. Mm-hmm. And every time I used to come back, like during summer breaks and stuff, he used to say like, oh, what's up, superstar? What's up? Because you used to see me doing my thing. But deep down, that nigga was hating that he shit. You feel like you left him out? Somewhat. Do you feel like that? Mm, I think so. Y'all was in a group, right? He was in a group. Okay, you went to college. Um, you took off. Yeah. You had a song that was hot. You walked out of college. Yeah. I'm out of here. My record popping. Right. You never reached back to him and said, "Man, you know, I'm popping right now. Let's you know let's get crazy? back in the studio and let's put something together." But you know, it's crazy though. Like even when we, when we were in a group, bro. Yeah. yeah. I can. Okay, he used to engineer our shit. Okay. I feel like he put more time in and himself. energy into his own vocals. <laughs> and then when you hear my shit, it's like, why does my shit not sound up to par with that? Make people so want to like, skip it. <laughs> exactly. So I had to really like just think about this shit. And we got a mutual homie. Okay. Who he, he, does, he doesn't hold back anything, bro. He's real as fuck. Okay. So, no filter. Exactly. So he just told me like, bro, I feel like you need to just branch off from him and do your own thing. And then ever since it's been... It's been it's been up here. But did you ever you know let him know like you know what man I don't let's not do no group thing no more. Did you ever sit down and tell him that uh, before you left to go to college or you never did? I don't think I did, but it was more so it was more so him. You don't think that probably turned him in? Okay, yeah, he was hating. You know, he yeah. he wanted stuff to sound better than yours, but you don't think that kind of turned him into a deeper I hater? I think so. I think so. You got a hot record out. He like, well, damn, man, I, I could have I could have communicated, but it's like. Yeah. I feel like I had bitter I had I had bitterness in me. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's like Was it bitter or did you have an ego? Both. I wanna both? say it's both. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I wanna say both. <laughs> so you, you you came back flossing on everybody? Yeah. And and for the longest I had that mentality like, okay, any motherfucker who did me wrong, you're gonna see this come up. You got a like, vendetta? Exactly. Like, and I feel like that right there, I feel like it blocked a lot of blessings from me because God's not gonna honor that. Mm-mm. Having that vengeance in your heart, you no, know what I'm saying? He's no. not gonna honor that. So I, I came up and I, I slipped up and I got myself in a lot of situations that like hindered me or stalled my career. Okay, you know what what's one for an example? Mm. You could say um, a part of your career where you hindered yourself. I can't even get into it because <laughs> it's that deep, huh? It's that deep. Oh, okay, might offend it, some it, people. It, it involves higher ups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, we don't want to go there. Yeah, I don't want to <laughs> revisit that. We cool, we cool now. But um, I want to say a lot. Another thing that kind of hindered my career was women. Like me being in a single parent household. Like I was, I was the youngest of three, uh, three boys. Okay. And I didn't have my father around, so I guess. I looked at women to like try to fill that, fill that, fill that void of like the love that I felt like I was missing. So like I used to put, I used to be like Captain Save a Ho. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Well, this you to, honest? Yeah, yeah. I'm being honest. Yeah, I used to, you know, I used to see a girl who had a broken heart, and I used to try to just like, you know, patch it for. Her. Yeah, beat her. Yeah, beat her for her and everything. Try to pour into her and hoping that I would get the same thing in, in return. I never got it. You know so, what I'm saying? So some of these women, like, would they, would they be going through like relationship situations? Something like that. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah, so yeah. you would, you know, you would meet them, and they would tell you they just broke up with somebody. Exactly. And, and then did you like salt to do to get her? I oh, know. No, did no, you no, throw no, salt no. on them? Like, oh yeah, you don't, you don't need him. Oh yeah. You could. Yeah, you, that you used way, to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Some, so some so like you that, was a yeah. hater. I was a hater. You was a hater. I guess I was an right? opportunist more so. Uh, I mean, well, if, if you if you throw salt on the next man or talk down on the next man, wouldn't that be kind of hate? I would. I wouldn't to get her to get her to to get into you. You're like, yeah, baby, you you don't need that fool. Like, in what a way, you need? I I got you. I'm, I'm gonna do for you. I, in a way, but I feel like I was more so thinking about myself and what okay. I and what the and what the girl could bring to me. Okay. Not thinking that everybody looking for love. Exactly. Not not thinking that everybody is cut from the same cloth as me. Because if I tell you I got you, I got you. You for sure. Me? You know what I'm saying? So, but like you, the time that I spent, yeah, in trying to build up other women, my yes. is the time that I could have spent progressing my career. And that's why I'm 27, and I'm just now starting to get to where I want to be. I could have been, but it ain't too late. Right? It's not. I could I could have been 22, 21. I I gone out of here by now. You feel me? So you feel like, but my question, um, how you felt like you was going to find love in a broken heart? See, I was young. I wasn't, <laughs> I didn't have the wisdom that I, that I have now. Okay. You feel me? Okay. 
Okay. I didn't have I didn't have that that father figure, or you know what I'm saying. I didn't ever had that father figure, bro. So I never really. But you can thought. never get that father figure from a, a, a female. You're right. You know, You're your right. mom made sure you was good. Move you did. to the suburb. Exactly. You got love. Love was there. You right. Love was there. So You're you right. you had all of that. You right. Yeah. You right. I guess it was just. I don't know, just some inner demons I was just battling with, you feel me? <laughs> okay. You feel me? I don't know. Before or after college? I would say both, before both? and after. Okay, so was you, was you, um, what, what, at what point would you say you would say you were, it was worse, you were, you were worse before college or after college? When you came on from college, you, like you said, you it was a savage, you was a beast. I feel like after college. After college, it gave you a different mentality, huh? It gave me a different mentality because, like, okay, not only am, not only am I, I paying, I'm paying all my bills on my own, right? Okay. It's like I got to deal with just I'm I'm in the real world at this point. You feel me? Yes. Like I'm dealing with like snakes left and right, and I'm dealing with life situations, and I'm really starting to come to the realization that no one really gives a fuck about you. No one cares about you in this world, bro. All, All your chosen few. Only a, yeah, only you you, you will me. definitely have a chosen few people yeah. in your life that sincerely, really, genuinely care. Yeah, I I, I can't you know I I can say that for sure you know because yeah. I got a few people that I know definitely like you know really got me. Yeah, for I sure. got I got some too, but it's like I guess I was thinking from like an outer circle type of standpoint. Mm. You feel me? Like I I can I can count the people on my hand, bro, that, that I know got my back. You feel mm-hmm. me? But mm-hmm. Out of that circle, I can't depend on nobody. You feel me? You can't depend on nobody in this life. Okay. They got you, but you just can't depend on them. Exactly. Uh, that's a different type of got. Because mm-hmm. people that really got you, you can depend on them if, if that time come. Right. You know? So, exactly. uh, I mean, definitely uh, got to leave pride at the front door. Exactly. You know? No, I feel that. <laughs> that's feel that. that's a definite. Got to leave pride at the front door. Um, that's for sure. And... um. Let me see. You say you're dropping the album. You said about three months. Uh, you gonna drop a single or something prior to that, or you just gonna Man. wait? You gotta gotta release something to to build up to it. Right. So I put out I put out two singles for the album, but like I said, we know what happened with that shit. Like yeah. marketing shit. You know, business wasn't all the way right. So I might either put out one more single. You should. Try to like, yeah, I might. I'm gonna put out one more single to Fresh try to start. Like, yeah, exactly. And then once the album comes, you you gonna see what I've been working on. Okay. Yes, sir. What you think that next single is gonna be? I don't I don't know. I I, feel like I got it in the vault. I've been recording so much. I just gotta wait and see, wait and see until I drop it. You feel me? What would you say is your favorite record out of all the music you have made? What's that one? Like, I asked this earlier, but I'm asking yeah. in a different format. All the time, it. like my, yeah, okay. all all time. This. It's that one right here. I got a song called uh, "All the Same." All the same. Yeah, and then again, I'm you know I'm talking about women like they're all the same. But I feel <laughs> like that kind of catapulted my my career a little bit more. It got posted a lot. It's like, it's like almost like a million streams. Okay. Yeah. So um, Escape Tracks they posted that shit. They reached out. I got a lot of I got a lot of good stuff out of that. So. Okay, so you, what is the this record is what they're saying? All women are the same. There's no yeah, difference. And like I said, that was from a dark point, a dark place. Oh, okay. In my, in my in my life, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel like I said, like I said, I got I got upcoming stuff that I feel like is more meaningful that can make a, a more positive impact. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like at, I feel like these days I don't really care if a song does good. I just I just want to be able to touch one person. You feel me? Yeah. Like so, like souls over streams. That's what I go by. Mm-hmm. Souls over streams. Mm-hmm. If I can like impact somebody, mm-hmm. then I'm cool. That's better than a stream. You feel me? Okay. And, and yeah. what what record is that? That what what's one of your records you know does that? I've done that for and you. That, and that's the thing. I got it in the vault. You gonna hear it on the album? Okay. Yes, sir. So you don't feel like nothing you've already put out? Like I feel like I put out. It haven't reached anyone. I feel like I put out some stuff to make people like know their worth and their value, mm. but it like it also left some kind of like bitterness in it because like some of the words that I'm saying in the songs are like it's kind of like you know bitterness. You feel it's bitter. Okay, you know? like stuff you've been through. Yeah, like okay. you just let it out. Yeah, like you know, f a hater. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. like I'm not trying to be on no type of like. I want to be pure. I want to do things for all the right reasons. I don't want to. I don't want to do things with you know, 
I guess shitting on niggas being icing on the cake. I I want to be able to just forget. I not forgive. I'm never. I'm I'm sorry. For forget. No, I'm sorry. Forgive, but never forget. There okay. we go. There forgive, you go. but never forget. Mm-hmm. You see, you feel mm-hmm. me? So that's what I'm on right now. Okay. Okay, because your past music, you just it's like you went there. Yeah, yeah. You I let it all out. You put it all on the table. Like you yeah, know what? Yeah, yeah. Here it go. Exactly. Here it go. Okay, exactly. but but. This new music is gonna show a new you, older you, better mentality, exactly. uh, better frame of mind, yes, and um, you look into, um, you know, really getting to the hearts of people right. to show them a different you. Right. The record that took off for you, like, did you ever do a remix to it or? No, and that's the thing, bro. Like, I was just a college kid, and I just put it out on my SoundCloud, bro. And this is around the same time that all the other trap soul artists was like blowing up, like Bryson Tiller. Mm. A lot of people like uh, Yo Tran, uh, you know, I was I was amongst those SoundCloud like trap soul artists, bro. Like I'm on uh, Fresh R and B three, bro, on Reverb Nation, bro. Like that's a classic playlist, my nigga. You feel me? Like, I'm on there with like Jaquees when he was start, first started popping off. You feel mm. me? Like I'm on there, so it's like I just felt like if I had like a a better marketing mindset or like if I had if, even if I had a team, my nigga, like I would have been like mainstream by now, you feel me? So that's what you pretty much feel like you need now, like a, a good solid team around yeah, yeah, you? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yes, okay. Sir. Okay. Yeah. Definitely having the right right people around you, man, really, really right. helps. You know, that way y'all could kinda like pitch ideas, you know, with each other. Right. And and, and put a game plan together, put a um, you know, actual um, you know, marketing right. um plan together to to make things go in the right direction. Exactly. You know, definitely, definitely. You have kids? No, not yet, sir. No, okay. <laughs> not yet, not yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, I wanna, I wanna be able to like, I wanna be able to establish myself and get myself all the right before I bring another human being in this world. Because okay. you know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm, if I'm not all the way right, I then can't. How I you can, gonna make yeah. sure someone else is right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense. It definitely makes sense, man. Your your piece on your neck. What what's that about? Oh yeah, it's my brand until now. Until um, now. Yes, yeah, sir. Eventually, I want to make it a regular label, but it's like right for right now, it's my movement. Meaning, like the, the triangle symbolizes change. It's like okay. an open triangle. Okay. And then until now, and it's like until now is a phrase. Like meaning everybody doubted me until now. Everybody slept on me until until now. Everybody told me no until now. It's like a turning point. You feel me? That's a record. Yes, sir. You know, everybody doubted me till now. Exactly. That, that's definitely a record you, you definitely need to work on, which also it is it'll be universal because it represents the brand and it represents everybody doubted you until now, which exactly. is universal. Right. You know, it it it'll speak volume. So exactly. that's definitely a, you know what I mean? Just just a good idea that just, you know, came to mind and appreciate and that. That's me, man. I'm a, uh, you know, I'm an idea OG. guy. You yeah, know? I need to keep I need to keep you around, bro. You got some good ideas. <laughs> oh yeah, that's all you I know. know. <laughs> if I don't know, I'm not gonna speak. Exactly. You know? I, I'm real. not gonna speak. What what's next for you, um, other than the album? What else are you doing? Uh, uh, what else merch, are you getting into? Merch. What's that about? Um, you know, until now, you know, the symbol. Same thing. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. You know, just this on a on a on a t shirt or like I want to do some like some urban streetwear type stuff. Like not just regular like t shirts and like you know stuff like that. I wanna I wanna put my brand in a whole lot of different. When things. you gonna start? Uh, like definitely before the album. Okay. I already got designs. So you can really start right away then. Yeah, I already got okay. designs and everything. That some of my people, you know, they they drew up some designs for the clothing. So it's just a matter of just putting it up. Okay. Like I said, things got prolonged, but. That's not no excuse. No, 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 no excuses, you know? No excuses. There's one thing I say, man, and I always say, which is a, a definite, a quote I live by, and anybody can, a hospital, not the only thing with patients. Exactly. You know, you can definitely live by that, you know? Right. Okay. Say merch. I mean, what what else? Shows. I haven't done a show since, what, 2017? Yeah. Yeah, I was actually the first American R&B artist to perform in Cuba. If you go on my uh, on my highlights on Instagram, okay, whatever you'll see all that like the Cuban rap agency invited. What was that me. about? The Cuban rap agency they were um they were celebrating, I forgot what what year it was, but it was the anniversary of hip hop because you mm. know they're a little bit behind us. Yes, they're still driving cars from the nineteen fifties, nineteen sixties. Yes, and they they just started stop listening to like Biggie and Pop. They still listen to Biggie and Pop, but reggaeton was a was a big thing over in Cuba. But now they're starting to listen to like 
You know, I brought. I feel like I brought something new to them. Like trap soul, they they didn't know nothing about that. When I performed that over there, bro, they were like, "Yo, what is this?" You feel me? And I got a documentary and everything. I got some. I got some. I got some videos on my on my page. You'll be able to see it. Okay. Let's go on there. Okay. Well, what was that like out there? How, you know, how did it feel? It's a whole different world. It's like a there's there's a good part. There's an old part of uh, Havana. There's a new part of Havana. I was in Havana, so like it's a third world country. Type of situation, yes. but like in the new Havana, it's more modernized. Mm. You feel me? They got hotels like you see in that. And in that's LA. where you were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in both. I was in both okay, sides. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I stayed at an Airbnb. It was like a mansion, bro. Like those things over there is they cheap to get. You know what I'm saying? I don't think we're allowed to go over there right now because we're under a new min- administration. Yes. But around like the Trump, the Trump era. Like you know, the borders it was were open. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, was yeah. wide open. That's when I went. No hinges. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, okay. So when um, what's so for the next um, single? Do you have an idea? Are 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 you when you considering dropping that? I do. Uh, I want to say by the end, of, by the beginning of April. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually about to. I got a session tomorrow. Like we're mixing, we're putting putting together the final mixes for the album. So mm-hmm. it's just a matter of choosing one off there because I got some more singles on the album. I just gotta pick one of those to to put out. Okay, and I'm gonna sit with some of my homies, some of my team, and we are gonna figure out which one is the best single to you know to put out. Okay, who who's an artist man in the game that you looking to work with one day? Mm. Um, I feel like I want to work with Scissor. She's dope. Okay, I feel like we would complement each other very well. The chemistry would be there. Um, as far as male artists, I want to work with Big Sean. Somebody who's from my own city. I met him a few times. We cool. Um, let me see. Of course, I want to work with Drake. Everybody get gotta get that. Yeah, everybody want to work. Gotta get that, that Drake dude. feature. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. You feel like that uh, really take off? Huh? Yes, sir. Of course. Of course. Okay. The Drake effect. Okay. Okay. That's what they call it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. I respect that. I respect that. Music on lock, man. Tell me too, man. Like, um, before. Moms moved you to the suburbs when you were like seven, eight years old. What was that life like for you mm. in Detroit? Man, so life in Detroit, we, you know, I was always involved in sports. Before before music, sports was my first love. Okay. So she got us into sports at an early age. I was playing what sport? T- Chelsea. Baseball. Baseball. I played baseball, you know, when I was around five, T-ball and everything mm-hmm. over in Rosedale, mm-hmm. Detroit. You know, um, but that's just one thing. She always got us involved in sports, or I was involved in the church. Before I was in the choir in church, I was a I was a um a usher. You know what I'm saying? So okay, I was always involved in stuff like that. Um, How was the house? Your household like? I was the youngest of three. Um, my mom had she, she had health problems and everything. She actually went into kidney failure after she had me. She had to she mm. she had the option to either have me. And 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 go into kidney failure or get an abortion, and I feel like that's another thing that take a toll on my mental, bro. Cause it's like I owe her, bro. Like she sacrificed her health to have me. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. And I feel like I'm not beating myself up anymore, like over it. Like, but when I was getting distracted by women, I used to beat up. myself up, and that resulted to drinking and everything. Yeah, and all that. I used to like bottle my emotions by drink by drinking also. Okay, you would hide behind alcohol. Exactly. My father, it's like, it's like, it's a, um, what's it called? Generational curses. Okay. You know what I'm saying? My father was an alcoholic. My grandfather got lynched in Arkansas for selling moonshine. He used to be selling all the moonshine to everybody in Arkansas. He got lynched for it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I feel like it's a generational like curse. You know what I'm saying? That I'm trying, that I'm trying, You're to, trying break. to break the cycle. Exactly. Okay. You wow. Me? So. That's cool. She said, Mom, she sacrificed herself to, to have you in, and you, you used to beat yourself up about it a lot. Yeah, and yeah. I didn't even know I didn't even know that was the case until probably my sophomore year in high school, bro. Mm. I didn't know that that was the reason. I always just knew she was sick. I, I almost lost her, like, maybe three or four times. You know what I'm saying? So wow. it's like I didn't know until my sophomore year in high school that the, the birth was ultimately the reason why she How was, did you find out? My stepdad told me. Like one day we was in the car just mm-hmm. riding, and he just brought it up. I'm like, what? I didn't know. So it was like ever since that day, I felt obligated 
Hey, even to this day, my mom got married like what three years ago. She has okay. a husband now, so it's like, even though she got a husband, I still feel obligated. You feel me? Yes. Like I feel like I don't know. I feel like I owed it to her. You know what yes. I'm saying? Like that's what. It, like at this point, the music is not about me at this point, bro. It's You're about my family, mom, and my and mom, family. and my family. Exactly, okay. bro. That's why when niggas play with me, bro. Like, do you like, ever? Um, how often do y'all talk? Every day, I come home every that's day. Cool, I wake yeah. up in the morning, like I cherish every moment because you never know, you know, how long, how much long you got with your loved one. You only get one mom. Exactly. So that's good. That's definitely like my, a good thing. My mom going through some stuff, like she having heart problems right now. She got surgery on the twentieth. My dad, my biological father, like I, I just now started trying to make you know a relationship work with him. Okay. He told me he got cancer recently, so it's like, like all it's just that a shit. lot at once. Exactly, bro. Okay, so y'all pretty much y'all are cool now. You forget, yeah, you, for you, you're not gonna forget, but you forgave him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I had to do that for me, and I had to do it for God. Cause yes, like, honor your father and mother. And mother. That's what the Bible yes. says. So it's like, okay, I gotta, I gotta set myself free. I gotta break the chains on my heart mm -hmm. so I can let God in. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So and let him, let him really use me. Cause if I still got this this guard up on my on my heart. From from past situations, bro. Yes, I can't. I can't let him allow him to use me the way he wants to use me. If I still got this vengeance in my heart, you feel me? How did y'all link to talk? You reached out, or he reached out to you? Um, uh, I reached out to him. Okay. Um. No, what? actually, no. Yeah, I did. I reached out to him. A, a something on your heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Because ever since I went, I started going to that church, Resurrection House for All Nations. Is like I've been blessed to be, you know, under good. Leadership, you know, and just give me advice, spiritual advice. And I'm at, a, I'm at a point in my life now where, like, I don't even listen to my friends or my family about advice, bro. Like, only advice I really want to have is from God, you feel me? Because, mm -hmm. like, anything else is, like, you know, it's not guaranteed. Okay. And what was that conversation like when you reached out to him? Oh, <laughs> you told dad? him you wanted to talk to him? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, pretty much, uh, I can tell he was a little frustrated about certain things. And I feel like there's a lot of things between him and my mom that are unresolved. Yeah. And I told him like, yo, you gotta you gotta let stuff go and y'all gotta actually talk things think talk these things out. Okay. Cause like the 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 conflict between you and her is affecting me. You feel me? Like I feel like he was using me to like using me to like get to her, and he she was using me to get to him. You yeah. was in the middle. I was in the middle of it. You know what I'm saying? In which no kid should ever be involved in a a, a parent conflict. Exactly. Ever. Exactly. Ever. They got wow. some, they got some unresolved business, bro. But it was it was all positive vibes for the most part. I told him I was gonna go out to Arkansas and see him and uh probably go fishing with him and stuff. You, you know? went out there? No, no, I I didn't go out there yet. Probably in April, and it's crazy because last year. Mm -hmm. I found out I had another brother. Like he reached out to me on Instagram. I thought it was a prank at first. Like, yo, I'm, I'm your brother. Like, yo, like, you know what I'm saying? I got another brother now, so he supposed to go out there, go see what's up with him. Did so, you ask your dad about him? Are you having? I didn't, I didn't go into detail. Like my family, we're not the type of people that really go into detail, really talk about our feelings like that. You know, that's why I put it into the music. So you got a lot built up on the inside of you. Exactly. exactly. A hell of a lot. A lot. You feel me? <clears throat> Got to find a way to um, to get it out, you yeah. know, yeah. to let it out instead of letting it just By stay and barricade it, you know, exactly. with, with inside of you, man. Like, you got to really express yourself. And, right. you know, if you feel some kind of way, man, start letting people know, you know, how you feel. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Bro, I used to be I used to be suicidal, bro. Like, yeah. I, I attempted suicide a few times. Like, well, high school was the first time I tried to... Running the uh, running to the highway, bro, and get hit. Like it might sound crazy, but no, it's it like don't when, sound crazy. When, you, it's when, real. You, when you're like when you're going through mental shit, bro. Yes. Like them demons overtake your mind, bro. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like the last time I tried was was in high school. Okay. But you know, what happened? Uh, I tried to jump off the damn uh the dorm, like the the building. And yeah. My, so homies had to try. They found me, tried to hold me back. So yeah, bro. It's been it's been like maybe at least four times I tried, but. I just thank God that it's been a minute. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm delivered from that. You feel me? I know there's more to live for. Yes. You feel me? So you don't have those thoughts anymore? No, I mean, be honest. Every once in a while, the devil try to slip in and put that suggestion in my head, but you can't allow him to. Exactly. I just pray. I pray every time I feel. It, I get the idea in my head. I just yes. pray. 
You feel me? Yes. Like you just be what just like a, a normal day. Yeah. Be going on and you get to thinking about what your past life. Past life or current situations, you feel me? Like something something like bro, the slightest bit of negativity, the slightest bit, bro, I'm thinking like, okay, do I deserve this? Or like or like I would sometimes find myself going to a liquor store to get like a shot or something just to calm my nerves. Still to this day? To this day. I I'm be honest with you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh okay then. Let's say you have some shots or whatever, you get to feeling um, intoxicated from the alcohol. Yeah. What about when you're sober? When I'm sober? When you sober up, you know, uh, okay, you, you you no longer got the drunk feeling. I feel like I'm cool. I'm cool when I'm sober until that next negative thing happens. And that's and that's why that's what I'm asking God to like give me strength and until like you know how like when you, I know cartoons, you got the angel and the demon on your shoulders, right? Yeah. You got the angel telling you you don't need you don't need the alcohol. You know, just pray. Yeah. And you the got devil the like, you got man, the... you better go get that fifth. Exactly, bro. <laughs> so, and that's what I'm going through to this day. But I feel like I'm stronger than I was. You feel me? Okay. I don't find it. I don't find it happening as much as it used to. So I know, I know God is still working on me. So you know. Yeah, you you got to find a way because definitely, um, um, being drunk or smoking weed or whatever is is like a a moment. A temporary fix. Right? Yeah, temporary feeling, and then you, you yeah. got to kind of work on yourself, man. Like whatever it is that's built up, you got to. If it's like conversations you need to hold with someone right. that that that's been built up, you need to sit them down. You need to start reaching out to these it's people. Crazy, because like a lot of this, a lot of the shit that it stemmed from would would be, would be in my family. And like we're the type of family we don't really like to talk about our issues. You feel me? But you have to. And we have to. But <clears> you're suffering. Like, since I'm the youngest. It's like I was told I'm the youngest thing on the totem. I'm the I'm the lowest thing on the totem pole. Mm -hmm. So it's like whenever I try to give my input or opinion about certain things, especially if it involves me, it gets shut down real quick. To this day, I'm a grown ass man. I'm 27 years old. Still express yourself. Mm -hmm. Never let nobody stop you from expressing what's in your heart and on your mind. I don't mm -hmm. care who it is. You don't let them shoot you down. Mm. You know, it, if they're doing that, then maybe you're talking to the wrong people. Mm. You're expressing yourself to the wrong people. If they don't want to hear the truth, the truth hurts. Right. That's a true statement, true fact. Right. Truth hurts. And if you're letting them know um, how you feel about them, let's say from, from years ago to current, mm -hmm. and you never really had a chance to express that to them, like, I've been feeling this way for, for a certain amount of time and I want to talk to you about it and they shooting you down, then yeah. th there's a guilty conscience there. And I, yeah, and I feel like that conversation would, bro, it would help me heal tremendously. Mm. So just to have that conversation and, and to have my voice heard, bro, what? It would, it would heal me tremendously because like to this day, it's like when it comes to, my, I'm not trying to, I don't want to put none of them on, on blast, but it's no, like, it's, it's not about, truth. it's not it's, about you know blast. Loved one, yeah. it's about realness. Really, you, you ain't putting them on blast. The truth is not blast. The truth is yeah. what you live through. You know what I mean? I, I, I can see in your demeanor, man, in your face expression, you, you have a lot built up on the inside of you right now. It's yeah. like, it's almost like you, you got a button that you don't know when that button is going to get pushed man, and you explode. You, That's why I be telling people to talk to me nice, bro. Talk to me nice, but like you, you, if I'm you, not disrespect you, don't disrespect me, bro. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying. True. So you gotta you gotta find a way to get that out of you, loved yeah. one, because it's you know what I mean it it can cause you to derail. Yeah, which I've done multiple times. But you don't want to continue exactly. derailing, you know, because you may derail one day, homie, and never be able to get back on the track. Right, right, right. You know, it could be your last derail, and and you definitely. Need, don't want that, so you mm -hmm. you got to really find a way to to get that out. You know, somehow, some way, right. uh, they, you need to demand a conversation. Okay, you know, you need to demand that they listen to what you got to say because this is something that you've been holding on inside of you for individually, family right. members, not not as a group individual. It's been an individual thing, and it's been built up individually. So you keep allowing that to stay on the inside of you. Like I said, you're going to derail. Yeah. You know? And, and then everybody's going to be acting like they care. Bro, what? If, if you care, you. then you care enough 
to sit down with me and allow me to say what I have to say, to get it off my chest, and let's move on. Exactly. So you can't let it stay built up inside of you, love one. You You just can't, you know? Mm -hmm. You, You definitely can't. Like, for instance, what's one of your loved ones, like, right now, let's say if was one of your loved ones that you would want to call to express yourself. Just to tell them how you feel, just to let them know, uh-huh. will you give me a minute so I can express and tell you how I feel? First and foremost, my mom. Your mom? You know? Yeah, that would, be the, that would be the first. But you appreciate her, right? Oh, of course. To let her know you appreciate her. Of course. And I, how much you love her. Yeah, I tell all of her every day. <clears throat> There's not a day that goes by where I don't tell her I love her. You know? That's what's up. You feel me? Like I, I literally cherish those moments, bro. Like yes. I'm like, oh, I'm thinking about my mom right now. Let me yes. call her right quick. You know what I'm saying? That's like, what's up. That's what I'm on right now. That's what's up. But while dealing with these bottled up emotions, you feel me? Yeah. Like I I learned to look past that just because the simple fact that I know she's going through health. Do stuff. you express that to her how you feel? Uh I don't think I get the opportunity to Why not? express that. I still get shut down. From mom too? Everybody, yeah. So what she say? Just leave it alone, let it be? Well, I feel like at this point right now she has heart problems, so she like so she is too much. It's too much, yeah. It's too much. Okay, so you're gonna have to go directly to the source. You got to, you know, without involving mom in it, because she already going through pain. She don't need no more added on to what she's actually going through. Right. You spoke to her today. I did. It's her birthday actually today. Yeah. It's her birthday. Yeah. I told okay. Her happy birthday today. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, tight. Yeah. yeah. That's tight, man. That's, That's tight. tight. Man, call her and give her a shout out. Let her know, mom. I'm doing an interview right now. I'm here. No jumper. I just want to, you know, call you again. Tell you I love you and happy birthday once again. Like I'm dead serious. Let me go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm dead you. serious, love one. For so real. That's not a bad idea, actually. I'm, I'm dead know. serious. That's cool. It's her uh, birthday. You right. know what I mean? Look, you, you're you doing something positive right. on your mom's birthday. You know, uplift her. Uplift her even more. You can put it on the speaker. It's cool. She just got done doing a whole photo shoot. So she might like, oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, Tom. Hey, Ma, how you doing? Good. How you doing? Good. I just wanted to, uh, I'm in an interview right now, but I just want to tell you I love you and happy birthday again. Thank you. How's the interview going? Is oh, it's it live? Or? It's going on right now. I'm in. The, I'm in the interview right now. We're talking right now. Oh, okay. Did mm. you just send a shout out to me on your on your interview. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm doing right now. Hey, shout out to my mom, Tammy Blasting Gang. Happy birthday! It's her birthday today. Yeah, real, real solid individual, a great mother, and everything. You know. Mm-hmm. Is it, on? is it on the radio or something? No, it's right now. We're doing a podcast. We filming it right now. We filming it right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, you you on the interview right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. You'll show it to her when it come out. <laughs> yep. But yeah, man, that's all I wanted to say. I'm going to talk to you soon. All right, thank you. Love you. All right, love you too. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. So I'm saying, love one, that's... Right, that's love. Uh, uh, yeah, that's 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 more motivation, uplifting. Like you're right. doing something positive today on her birthday. You right. you involved her in, right. in what you're doing. So, man, that's exactly. a part of that's what I'm about. Love one, yes, you know, sir. keeping that motivation, man, it, and, and keep them spirits up. Right. But what you're going through, you gotta you gotta let them people know. You know what I mean? That that you have personal vendettas with. Right. You can't let it. Just stay built up, you know, because right. if God forbid it to happen or one of them leave here, you'll never get your chance right. to tell them how you really feel. Then, then that'll really bother you even more and and a build up more pressure than what you already have built up. So, mm-hmm. find a way to let it go, get it out, think positive. Um, don't hold it in no more, loved one. Like I said, find a way. Demand. Demand to sit down, demand to ear, express how you feel, and leave it alone and, and let it go. You feel me? Amen. Stay doing it right. Stay doing it positive. This was amazing right here, loved one. Yes, sir. Appreciate you coming out. I appreciate you, OG. OG Suicide yes, in the building with my loved one, Sean Christopher. Yes, 
Make sure everybody hit up OG Suicide in the building. Go get your merch. And guess what? Let it out, love one. T-shirts on the way. And one more thing. Flyer coming soon. I'm announcing it today. Let it out, love one. Live show. June the 25th at nice. Club Bahia. Stay tuned. Tickets on Eventbrite. Peace.